Now, let's talk about the civil and criminal fraud enforcement provisions. Section 592 of the Tariff Act of 1930 generally provides that any person who by fraud, gross negligence, or negligence enters, introduces, or attempts to introduce merchandise into the commerce of the United States by means of any material and false electronically transmitted data, written or oral statement, document or act, or by any omission which is material, will be subject to a monetary penalty. In limited circumstances, the person's merchandise may be seized to ensure payment of the penalty and forfeited if the penalty is not paid. The civil fraud statute has been applied by customs service in cases involving individuals and companies in the United States and abroad that have, negligently or intentionally, provided false information concerning importation into the United States. A criminal fraud statute also provides for sanctions to those presenting false information to customs officers. Title 18, USC Section 542 provides a maximum of two years imprisonment, a fine, or both, for each violation involving an importation or attempted importation. Both the civil and criminal fraud statutes were enacted by Congress to discourage people from evading the payment of lawful duties owed to the United States. Although these laws apply today, whether or not the United States is deprived of lawful duties. In addition, under Section 596, of the Tariff Act of 1930, the Customs Service is required to seize and forfeit all merchandise that is stolen or smuggled, as well as controlled substances, certain contraband articles, and plastic explosives that do not contain a detection agent. Merchandise may be seized and forfeited if its importation is restricted or prohibited because of a law relating to health, safety, or conservation. The merchandise is lacking a federal license required for the importation. The merchandise or packaging is in violation of copyright, trademark, trade name, or trade dress protections. The merchandise is intentionally or repetitively marked in violation of country of origin marking requirements, or importation of the merchandise is subject to Quantitative restrictions requiring a visa or similar document from a foreign government and the document presented with the entry is counterfeit. Additionally, federal laws relating to criminal activities commonly known as money laundering created criminal and civil provisions that, along with fines and imprisonment, enable the government to prosecute persons for and to seize and forfeit property involved in or traceable to violations of the Money Laundering Control Act or Bank Secrecy Act. Importation fraud violations are included as specified unlawful activities or predicate offenses within the Money Laundering Control Act. Criminal penalties include imprisonment for up to 20 years for each offense and fines of up to $500,000 or both and or a civil penalty up to twice the value of the property involved in the offense. The criminal and civil fraud statutes, as well as money laundering statutes, are all enforced by special agents assigned to the Office of Investigations. They operate throughout the United States and in the world's major trading centers.